during the pandemic, as soon as the pandemic started, as soon as we got locked down, uh, all my work disappeared. I'm a television executive producer and producer and writer director. It all went away. So I sat at this desk behind me every morning trying to create content to remind people I'm out there. I'm a content creator. So I wanted to put stuff out there. And to my left over here, I have uh, two racks of hats. So about a weekend, I said, well, I've got all these hats. I'm going to wear a different hat every day until we get to be together again. And I took a picture of the first hat and put it on Facebook. And I didn't think anything of it. Later that day, all these people posted hats of their own. So every day, first thing when I'd get up, I'd take a picture of a hat, put it up, and wait for the other hats to arrive. So I was feeling connected to people, even in isolation. And as we went on, I started to add stories about the hats. Every hat reminded me of a great event or a person or a place. So I was not only connected to other people, I was connected to my own life. And then it went on and on. And people started to drop off their, uh, they ran out of hats and I didn't. I was a little worried about becoming the crazy hat guy. I thought that's it for me. I'm crazy hat guy from now on. But a funny thing happened. All these people started telling me they were sad that it was over. And these weren't just people who were part of the hat club. These weren't even people who were clicking like. These were people who had just been following along. It had been something that connected them in a time when we were disconnected. And then people started telling me to write a book. And I didn't really see it at first. But uh, when my mother, who wrote a column for the paper in Thunder Bay for years, asked me to write the book, I said, OK, if I can get the clearances, I'll, I'll write the book. And that's when all the clearances came in from New Era Hat Company, 47 brand, the NFL, the NHL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball, the CFL, the NCAA, Peterbilt Trucks, the Globe Theater in London, Bell Globe Media, Blue Ant Media, just everybody except Marvel came in. And I knew it had to be a personal book. It couldn't just be about the hats. It had to be about the stories and the meaning that was in them, because that's what people were really responding to. The thing that really makes a good story is the human connection, a connection that makes people feel something. But I think the things that make the really best stories, the stuff that I've been longing to do and what I think I did in this book was to take people places and make things really personal for them. So I think that's a story. And what I try to do with the stories in this book is either deal with universal things or unusual things. So people would see themselves enough in the universal things that when we got to the unusual things, uh, they would already be along for the ride. It's my stories, but the goal of the book is for people to see themselves in them and you reflect on your own life. Boy, it's a journey. Um, the tip that I would have is to do your research on publishers, on self-publishing. Have as many people as you can read it, listen to what they have to say, uh, particular people with informed opinions about writing. Um, do some research on what you really want the book to do. Uh, I would keep your sales goals modest, especially for a first-time author. And uh, try to enjoy the process all the way through. Try to enjoy all the writing. Uh, it's hard, especially the rewriting. The further you get in rewriting, the more tedious it becomes. Ernest Hemingway said that. Yeah, just enjoy the process. I have almost all my ticket stubs until ticket stubs stop being a thing. I wouldn't say there are the same amount of stories attached to that, but I, there's a lot of stories attached to those. So occasionally I'll pull out the albums I have of ticket stubs and, you know, go back to the 1984 World Series game four, sitting behind home plate, or the last day of the 1987 seasons when Frank Tanana pitched a one nothing shutout and Larry Herndon hit that home run. Those are magical times, all my Bruce Springsteen ticket stubs. And after the Great Hat Marathon, uh, people begged for more. So I did shirts just to help people out, just to give that connection. And other people who didn't have hats wanted something to do. You know, I think we all have something. 
they all come with an experience. I was having experiences and I saved the hats because the hats reminded me of those experiences. They reminded me of people and places and things. And I wasn't aware of that until I started this. You know, it looks like one thing, but it's something else. My favorite writers are Bruce Springsteen and James Joyce and Stan Lee. And they wrote things that looked like something and something kind of shiny. Well, not so much for James Joyce, but uh, things that looked like something, but were something else. So the book looks like it's about hats and there are a lot of hats in it. And you will hear a lot about stadiums if you're a sports fan. There are a lot of sports fan experiences. I went to 38, I've been to 38 baseball stadiums and more football and hockey beyond that. So you get a lot of those things. You, you, we talk about what makes a good hat. Really, this book is about stories. It's about connection. And it's about what happens to you when those connections are severed or threatened. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a fun read. You're going to laugh. But there are also points that are really quite emotional. And I have found that those are the things that the readers talk about most. And, you know, the first half is fun. I think you need to have the fun before you get into the other stuff so that you feel the other stuff. I would say to people, you know, if you don't like sports or hats, you just skim some of that parts and get to the other stuff. It's, it's really about more than that. But if you do like sports and hats, you should like pretty much all of it. For your audience, there's a lot of Detroit stuff in there. There's a lot about the Lions and the Tigers and the Red Wings. A lot of it will seem familiar. There's some great stories about the University of Windsor and my time there. Windsor is, is very close to my heart. It's a very warm spot in, in my world.